Hey guys, today is uh, September the 18th of 2016 and I want to go over WDGAN time cycles. The last video I did in regards to uh, what I recommend the newbies uh, start learning and start you know, practicing and researching was uh, time itself and time cycles. So I want to go ahead and uh, do a little video of some of the techniques I, I use and do and maybe this could uh, give you an insight on your research and could lead you to uh, other things. There's a quote from Albert Einstein, theoretical physicist, and uh, I find it amusing and also fascinating. The only reason for time is so that everything doesn't happen at once. Einstein. Time cycles. This is what W.D. Gann says, how do I forecast future cycles, you may ask. In order to forecast future cycles, the most important thing is to begin right. For if we have the right beginning, we will get the right ending. If we know the cause of the effect, then there can be no doubt about predicting the future event or effect. A couple of things stand out at me right here. Uh, the most important thing is to begin right. And then the next thing that jumps out at me is if we know the cause of the effect, the cause of the effect, and important thing is to begin right. Which here's an example. Uh, there's a few that believe that, you know, the first trading day of an instrument is the beginning of the right. So... I'll show you a few things that are important. This is Facebook. Uh, one thing you want to, in your research and, and tracking time, is uh, the important date will be the first day that the instrument trade, which is uh, 518 of 2012, uh, and the time. There's two things about the time. One group of, of uh, Gannists believe that the first uh, transaction that happens uh, once it goes on board on the market is the uh, important one. And then there's other Gannis that believe, no, we're really, this really transaction going on in the background. So you should really start the uh, open of the market of that day. So start tracking everything from 930, even though uh, Facebook hasn't opened till like maybe sometime in the afternoon or 11 something. So those are the two schools of thought. You could use either or. You could use the 930 open of 518 of 2012 or the actual first price when it opened, which was $42.05. The next thing you want to do is uh, the actual action of the first uh, candle. Uh, my mentor uh, taught me that the uh, on the first trading day candle, uh, there's a lot of DNA encoded within uh, this uh, Facebook and could help you indicate and uh, forecast future uh, support and resistance just by this candle right here. So uh, for that case, then the open is important. The uh, high of that candle, which is the 45, the low, which is $38, and the close of 38 point, I think it's 23 cents. Is important also the next thing is important with tracking of uh, the beginning getting the beginning right will be that first impulse there's a lot of uh, information encoded in there too with that first leg going down all the way to a uh, 6 6 of uh, 2012 and then not that important but important equally important will be the the leg down one two three uh, the three move here will be important but the most important too is also or lastly should I say is the low of the chart which would be 9-4-2012 so going uh, in importance the date that the instrument first traded and I'll let you decide either the 9-30 or the actual transaction that first hits the uh, the market um, the first candle, the action there, and uh, the first impulse, and then lastly will be the low. With those three information there, you could uh, 
with calculations and all kinds of stuff uh, that I won't get into because this is not the uh, video for it. You could determine where this thing is heading and how far and where will it go. I'm going to continue. Just want to show you that as an example. Uh, as an uh, important thing is to begin right, and if we have the right beginning, we will get the right ending. If we know the cause of the effect, then there can be no doubt about predicting uh, future events. I'm going to dive into the uh, cause of the effect. And he goes on in uh, Time Cycles. He says, in making my calculations on the stock market or any future event, I get the past history and find out what cycles we are in and then predict the curb for the future which is a repetition of the past markets, movements. The great law of vibration is based on like producing like. We're going to go now to the pound dollar. Uh, I'm going to try to make this video short, uh, but precise. So like that, you kind of, I'm not going to show you everything in regards to time. I got to leave some up, some stuff up to you so you guys can figure it out and uh, trial and error and, uh, research and dig and get your investigation hats on uh, but I'm gonna show you a little few things that you could you could use uh, to get you going in the right start and help you when you're trading first would be time cycles uh, I'm assuming most of you have and I know a lot of them have it is cycle brackets or cycle arc cycles from point A to point B the first thing you want to do and if you don't you should probably get a better uh, broker or better trading platform uh, first thing you want to do is take the high, and I'm using the pound, the uh, 715 high. This is just using time cycles. Take that right there, click on it, and take the next high that the pound did, which was 618. Click on that. You're going to leave it red. Mine default to red because uh, it's going to show you as resistance. So into the future... Uh, if you if we put this high here and you're trying to see where this uh, a possible high could be, it would probably be right here. And remember, I said possible because nothing's written in stone. This doesn't have to be another high here, because if you look into the future, it didn't make another high. It kind of went sideways here, but it actually made a high right here on the 24th. So this one, in theory, said you know uh, 524. We're going to probably make a high, but a month later in May the high. So look at that. That's interesting right there. So anyway, so that's an example. And in the future, there could be a possible high uh, set right here for a 4, 24-ish uh, around there for a possible uh, top. Then the next thing you want to do, let's get a little closer. You want to take this high, which is the 618, uh, and click it right here with the uh, 624 and that would be your other high. And uh, into the future, you'll see that maybe it could be somewhere around June 20, uh, 30th, around there. So you go from top, top to top. Uh, then the next thing you would do is go from bottom to bottom. So we're taking the 7.9 low. Let's get a little closer here. 7.9 low right here. Click on that and take this low which is 413 and we're going to color this green if you have the option to I recommend you do it because um, uh, having a bunch of these circles uh, time cycles could get confusing and you don't know what what it relates to because they all kind of like could get a little messy and crazy so I color green for like support because there was a low here and then we made another low here and then you go into the future and see where it could be a possible low. So from this low to this low, then we're probably going to be looking at something like somewhere around uh, the 10th, the 9th, around there, that week of January of 2017. could be a possible low. You can take this out, chop around, and maybe put a low here. The next thing you want to do is uh, I like the cycle again. Take this uh, 413 low and pick this uh, February 29th low right there. And then color that green also because that's support. And these are going by past pivot swings 
low. So that's green, right? And then you look into the future, you see that you got a, what I call a cluster. You got from two different uh, swing pivot points uh, showing that there could be uh, something significant here of that first week of January. So that you want to keep an eye and track on. And, you know, so you got the highs, you got the lows. And then lastly, what you want to do, uh, and you can see that I didn't pick this one because this actually could be broken. So right now this is kind of current. So we're going to see if this whole this low holds. If it holds, then maybe we could start trending higher. Um, I'm kind of leaning that that could hold, but, you know, you never know. I've been wrong in the past. So we'll see. Time will tell if that's the low or not. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is take the low here, the ninth, and go to the top of the uh 15th, uh, do I have it right there, there you go, nope, I didn't get it, the 15th, this one you color another color, this is more like the swings that the uh, instrument do, so I could color it maybe like blue or whatever, and you have that there, <clears throat> so from here to here, that was the cycle. So let's look in the future what would happen if we were just trying to find it from here. You can see that here, nothing really happened. It became a dud. And you'll come across this on, on GAN Analyst, you know, on, on doing analysis with GAN techniques. That sometimes they work, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, through the time and experience I've been trading, I've noticed that there's other factors of the forces. I call it variables that are, are more in control and leading in price action. So this cycle here didn't have much effect. Uh, if you go into the future, uh, let's go right here. You can see that there was a cycle low somewhere around uh, 21st around here. And there was a low of the 7.6, 7.5, So uh, does it correspond with that? I don't know. We'll see. There's a next one coming up in the future. It will be July 21st. So we'll see how it pans out. So you continue doing that. And then you do one from like here to here, another swing low from here to here, um, from here to here, from here to here, and color them all blue, and from here to here. And that way you distinguish, uh, I don't want to do it right now because I don't want to waste time, but you get the picture, and you have that as blue as the swing points from point A to point B on, on swing pivots. And uh, if you look, uh, if you do all that, you'll kind of see what cycles or where things could, you know, possibly change on the bigger, you know, time frame, not these little fractal ones on the bigger ones. So the bigger ones will probably be here. Uh, and if you do the ones with the blue on all those other points, you might probably see something show up here, whatever of importance or clusters and uh, sort of like that. So that's that on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on cycles. Let's hide that and uh, let's continue uh, I think that was it for here. Um, let's see. Gan continues. I have always looked for causes, and when once I determine a cause, I can always be sure of the effect or future event which I predict. It is not my aim to explain the cause of the cycles. The general public is not yet ready for it and probably will not understand or believe it if I explained it. So one, Gan was not going to reveal his secret. Two, if he were to reveal his secret, everyone in this planet would have been calling him nuts. They w One, would not understand it, and then second, wouldn't even believe it, even if he just shows proof of evidence of it. So he was not going to do uh, neither. Uh, but the key I have, the, the key that I see here is I have always looked for the causes. The causes is what, what interests me in, in, in regards to the time cycle trying to find the cause and there's different ways of finding it and uh, what I'm going to show you right now is mostly more on the uh, price and time of of the uh, of the chart using time and using the price As you can see the pound did a high of 715 this is the time that's the high and it went low on 413 at uh, 145.64 and this is the seconds this is the minutes the hours the days it took the weeks the month, the years, and within the 365 uh, days, this is the percentage of that move. And uh, 
from the low of 413 to 618, I'm just going to go over these uh, three swing points uh, on how I go about uh, some doing some calculations. But I just don't use this alone. I use other stuff to confirm things. So I'm just kind of giving you an insight how, how I would use time and price um, in this aspect. 618, we put a high, and this is the time that it did uh, to the minute. And this is the high, and this is the second it took and minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, years, and a percentage from this low to this high. First thing I would do, I would square the dates. The date would be 7-15-2014. That's the high. I'll take the squaring of that date and use the cycle of 17 to get a date range between 328 and 430 of 2015. So roughly, it's like a ballpark. If there's going to be a possible low, it's going to be somewhere around here. There's other ways of uh, calculations and techniques that Double Degan did that would pinpoint it to the date. And I'm assuming he probably gotten that far in her calculations to pinpoint it even to the exact hour or minute. This is just a range of where it could be the possible low from 715, just using the date and squaring the date with cycles of 17. Uh, once you uh, get to that low of 413 and it's a respected swing low, you will use this date to square the date right here of a 413 of a cycle of 9, and you will get a range between 616 and 73 of 2015 to find a possible high. Uh, same thing here uh, in regards to price, and that's just on, on the date where it could be the possible low. In regards of where it could be the possible price range low, you will use cycles in price. So the high cycle price you would use is the 1719. You would use a cycle of 10, and that low was 145.64. So using the cycle of 10 within the cycle price of the uh, 1790, you'll get a range between 146.67 and 142.26 so that would be your range once you get that low uh, which is the uh, 14 and you want to find out the high of the 18th you will take with a 145.64 and you will use a cycle of five and um, this was the actual high and that cycle of five uh, within the cycle price itself Will give you a range of 15.795 and 60 uh, 16.048 that range. So now let's look at the chart and see how that all looks. Let's go over here and let's put my drawings. I did some of this already, so let's just do the uh, rectangle. So right here is the green. This would be the range of where there could be a possible low, and that's not using Astro. This is not using. This is just mathematics. Uh, and scoring the price you can see that from here if this was a respected high then you could determine uh, that it could be a possibility that the low could be within this range and it uh, got this range right here and it ended up somewhere around here 164 um, what is it a 165.64 and then the gray one is where it could be the possible range within the dates. So this is price and this is dates. So somewhere between uh, March 28th all the way to uh, April 30th, there could be a possible low. Uh, once you put the uh, uh, trend lines, time levels, you can see right here, these are the ranges. Uh, the same thing for the top uh, and for price action, possible uh, top right here. Uh, where am I? There we go. And uh, you can see, let's see, show trend lines right here. And this is just using price and time together right here. From right here to here, 413, it took 272 days, 193 bars, uh, minus 15.27% of the downside. From this low to this high, it took 66 days, 49 bars. So days are calendar days, bars are trading days, and it was a positive move of uh, uh, 9.36. And from the top to top was 338 days and 241 
bars or trading days. And if you can see on the times from the high to low to low to high, these are all the seconds, hours, days. There's a lot of stuff here encoded that if you have a good eye and you're a researcher and detective, you can see some correlations uh, within this and uh, this chart right here. Um, so to sum it up, score the date from the high cycle of 17 will give you a range it doesn't give you the exact date it just gives you a possibility worse and you just look at price action to see if it's going to happen if it doesn't it'll just uh continue going lower and then these calculations are void from the low you take the low which was 145.64 uh square that date and the cycle of, of nine will give you this range of 616 all the way to 73 which that reflects these blue lines this is where the possible low, low will be within the uh, price cycles you can see that the high of uh, 1790 you do a cycle of 10 within that price and you get a range of uh, 1467 uh, 14667 and 14226 within that range and that is the color green right here where, where could be a possible low in price same thing here, you take the low of the 14th, 14.564, and you do a cycle of five, and this is the range you get, anywhere between 15.795 and 16.048, which is the green right here. And I just wanted to show you this right here. You could do this technique going there. Now, one thing I haven't shown you is how I get these cycles. I can't show you everything, but I could tell you that if you research and study and look deep into things, you could figure it out. If I'm going to do anything, I'll take Gan's approach. I'll be very cryptic myself. But the truth is out there. You just got to find it out for yourself. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastics 1.9 Study, research, everything that you need is here, encoded, within price and time, for you to determine the future. Backtest, look. Remember my first video, study time. Study why from here we put a high to a low, why from this low we put a high here, and just keep moving forward in time and just study why these points in time, they stop, and why is it resistance and why is it support. And the more you study and the more you research and the more you look at these things, the more things will seem to make sense slowly it won't happen overnight but the more you look at it and see it the more it will make sense to you hope this video helps and i'll keep you posted on more thoughts on time and cycles